Today, this special education teacher speaks about why I am wearing my pearls and why I hope that you as a teacher or a special education teacher will not, I repeat, will not shy away from talking about the moment that has happened in our history. So you guys know, as a special education teacher, I am all about diversity. I am all about representation. I try to share a lot of books with you guys about um, other people with disabilities who actually share their stories because I believe that our students need to see themselves in literature. And if you are a special education teacher or a conscious gen ed teacher, you know that your students who have learning disabilities don't often see themselves in print. However, that belief that all people should be represented doesn't extend just to um, people with disabilities, the area in which I have a great passion, but that's for all things. And there, this moment has been so remarkable for women, for black people, for South Asian people. I'm not sure if they have actually seen themselves represented in our government. And I am telling you, I am here for it. I am so excited, but I hope you, my colleagues, special education teachers and gen ed teachers alike, take it upon yourself to really seize on this opportunity and talk to your class about this moment in history. It's not political. Like I am seeing so many people who are saying how afraid they are for whatever reason, whether or not you're afraid because you think um, we will have another insurrection, whether you're afraid because you don't believe in the politics of um, a Democratic or a, a president who it comes from the Democratic Party. Like we have to get over those things, right? We have to get over fear because fear, when you are driven by fear, you make poor decisions, right? You know, I have hope. Yes, have we seen some horrible things? We have, but I think I have been given hope for a better tomorrow. And if we're gonna change anything, if we're gonna teach our kids to really be people to do what's right because it's right, then it starts with us acknowledging things that need to happen. So, and I'm telling you, I'm just so excited and not only for Vice President um, Harris, but also I'm from the state of Georgia. We are sending our first black person and our first um, person of Jewish descent to Congress in all of these years. The, for the first time. So it's really an exciting time. Um, you know, I wouldn't ask you guys to share these opportunities and talk to your students if I wasn't first doing it for my students. And as many of you know, I founded a school for students with learning differences. And so we are not only going to be talking about the inauguration, we are actually holding our own inauguration. So the president of our student body will be inaugurated on tomorrow. But I also want to step more. Um, one of the things that I did for my daughter, I wrote her a note that I hope and pray that she hangs on to the words forever. And it would be really cool if she hangs on to the card too. I actually gave both her and my four year old a card and I wrote a very special message that I would like to share with you. I have my computer here. It says, my dear Aubrey, on today, Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, you will witness history. You will witness the first female, black and South Asian woman to become vice president of these great United States of America. We celebrate with Vice President Harris and we will allow this to serve as an example that God is no respecter of person. He can and does use anyone, the believer and non-believer, male and female, black and white, and all things in between at his will. We will no doubt hear some ugly things said about the new president and vice president like you heard about the old administration. Just know that no matter what is said, your mandate is clear. As a Christian, your job according to 1 Timothy 2nd chapter 2nd verse is to pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris and all others who have authority 
and power. However, never fall in the trap of allowing politics to be your religion, nor your religion to be clouded by your politics. Use your morals and values, which are found in God, as well as prayer to lead you in who you will eventually cast your votes for. Lastly, God created women to do great things too. Some of us will be wives, mothers, and homemakers. Some of us will be leaders and career driven. Some of us will carry several titles. Whatever he calls you to, he will equip you to be great in doing it. You are awesome and unstoppable and incredible. And God has called you to do some awesome things. I can't wait to see where his purpose for your life leads you. In the meantime, let's be happy and pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. Join millions of other women who would wear their pearls in honor of Vice President Harris' tenure as Vice President, the first female and South Asian um, Vice President. Now, I know you guys will not be talking about God and so forth, but I wanted to share that because that's just what I am doing in my household. However, I think the message overall has been conveyed. This is an important moment in our history and it needs to be discussed. And we don't need to be fearful to discuss it because it doesn't have to be offensive. And one of the groups I'm in, a special education group on Facebook, a, a young, and she just happens to be Caucasian, uh, but she almost kind of hurt, wrote a post asking if she was in the wrong because she allowed her students to listen to Martin Luther King's speech and to write, I guess, a response to it. And another teacher at her school said that she shouldn't be doing that. And in her mind, she's like, oh, this is a man who like preach good, you know? He's, we're talking about dreaming. We're talking about the vision that, you know, he wanted for America and she couldn't understand why that was so wrong. It wasn't. This was more about this lady's I don't want to say what her belief system is, but this is all about her. Whether or not she had a fear to talk about it, we shouldn't be fearful of talking about people and things that are the values of what we want our America to be. And we want it to be founded on truth, right? So we have to talk about it. And sometimes things are not always hunky-dory but we have to give our students a safe place to discuss it. And then we have to recognize the obvious. Once again, you know, in this wonderful, great country, we are still living in a time where we have first. It may not should be, but it is. And it's important for you to recognize that and recognize that for your girls, recognize that for your black individuals, recognize that for your South Asian students talk about it. There's nothing wrong with it. I know that no matter what side of the aisle you are on, we don't want to go back to, let's just go to the immediate history. We don't want to go back to January 6th, okay? We don't want that. I'm almost positive that, you know, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, that is not, you are not one of the extreme um, people who led an insurrection upon our great democracy. But the way we make sure that that doesn't happen again is to teach our kids. And let's not teach alternative facts. Matter of fact, that's how alternative facts start to look real when people of goodwill won't recognize the obvious and won't talk about it. So my mandate to you guys um, is to really use this time as an opportunity to speak truth to the obvious. Your students are living history. Make sure they know that. Make sure they understand that. What comes to mind right now was a line in President um, Biden's um, inauguration speech. And he said that politics should not be raging fires. Please forgive me if it wasn't quoted just right, but politics should not be raging fires. We should be able to 
have opinions, we have to create safe places and allow our kids to uh, be able to synthesize. So guys, that is all that I have for you today. Let me know how you are feeling about this inauguration. Do you have hope for our future or are you going to be stuck in the past with fear? Um, I choose to look forward to a better day and to have hope and faith that we can get this together. No, we don't have to be a perfect union. We just have to be one that respects each other and everybody else's opinion. Okay, guys, I love you. Have an awesome day and I will see you soon.